Let's talk about how you'd go about calculating the energy of phase changes. And I hand drew this graph in there to make some points. But before we do it, let's look at the questions. What do all these questions ask for? And I, first of all, they're all based on example 9-9 in the notes. But uh, more specifically, they ask how many joules, how many joules, how many joules, how many joules, and how many joules. They all ask how much energy is needed to warm water up or potentially to release the water or to is released as the energy gets cooled down. Same thing, if you're releasing it, it's just the same thing but with a negative sign on it. If you're warming water up, same thing with a positive sign on it. Um, but you'll notice that these all involve changing water from one phase to another. For example, if it's 40 degrees Celsius, I hope we understand that's liquid water, and then change it to vapor at 100 degrees Celsius. Well, we assume water doesn't vaporize until it's 100 degrees Celsius. So you got to warm it up and then vaporize it. So all of these have some calculations where you need Q equals MC delta T. Well, many of these have... Actually, yeah, all of these have some calculation or other that involves Q equals MC delta T, in which case you need to use the appropriate value of C for ice, liquid water, or um, gaseous water, aka vapor, or some sort of phase change, either the vaporization when you vaporize it or the fusion when you freeze it or melt it, and vaporization is for vaporizing or condensing it. So uh, we have to understand that when you take, say, negative 100 degrees Celsius water, which is very much frozen, and you warm it up to positive 200 degrees Celsius, it's not just a smooth warming up. As you add energy, you get to the point where it's melting. At its melting point, you'll keep on adding energy and it stays the same temperature even though you're still adding energy. And then when it's done melting, it starts warming up again. Once Again, once the energy, once the melting is complete, the liquid water warms up. And then once it starts to boil, it stays at 100 degrees Celsius until vaporization is complete. So at this point, you're still adding energy, but it's not getting any warmer. It's kind of like on a hot stove. You can boil water, and that water stays 100 degrees Celsius until it's done evaporating away completely. Then the vapor will start to warm up as you continually add energy. So along this point, even though the temperature stopped going up, you're still adding energy. Here where the temperature is rising, you are adding energy the same rate that you are adding it here when the temperature is not rising. It's just temperature cannot rise until a phase transition is over. And then when a new one begins, temperature cannot rise until the phase transition is over. So this informs what we do here. So here, if we're at 48 degrees Celsius, we're about here in the liquid water area. And then heating it to vapor means heating it up and then vaporizing it. That's a two-step process. Here, converting 150 grams of ice at 0 degrees Celsius, so that means ice right here, to vapor at 100 degrees Celsius means melting it warming up the water, and then vaporizing it. That's three calculations, and you have to add up the energy for each to get the total amount. Just as here, you'd have to add up the energy to warm it from 48 to 100, and then the energy to vaporize it at 100 degrees. Um, you'd have to add those two numbers up to get your final answer. Here, temperature from negative 10 to 50, we hope you understand that at negative 10 it's frozen, and at positive 50 it's a liquid. So we hope you understand that that means the energy to raise it from negative 10 to 0, the energy to melt it, and then the energy to take that liquid water and warm it up to 50. That's three calculations that you have to add your numbers together to get your final answer. What I'll show you how to do is the big granddaddy of them all, because if you can do the big granddaddy of them all, you can do anything else. Heating it from negative 40 where it's frozen to positive 250 where it is a gas. It's like off the scale, which is a terribly mid misscaled anything, but whatever, it's okay. Um, and by the way, look at the last one here. Energy released. It's just the same thing as we've been doing for any of the rest of these. You just put a negative sign on it. As in, okay, if it takes this many joules to vaporize it, then it's negative this many joules gets released when you condense it. If it takes this many joules to melt it, then this many joules gets released when you freeze it. Okay, so let's see. Boiling water. 100 grams of boiling water means liquid but 100 degrees down to freeze at 0 degrees Celsius. That means for the very last one, it means for this one here, the energy to do this plus the energy to do this. That way it's frozen at 0 degrees. So you're just taking those two calculations and adding them together. But let's go through the big dan granddaddy of them all. Um, we're going to warm the ice from negative 40 to 0 and then melt it. That's a second calculation. Your third calculation is to take that zero degree water and warm it up to 100. Your fourth calculation is to vaporize the water at 100 degrees Celsius. 
and then your fifth calculation is to rise it from 100 to 250. You add all five of those calculations together and you'll get your answer in joules. So let's do it. So one, warm up the ice. From negative 40 to zero, delta T equals positive 40 degrees Celsius because it's from negative 40 to zero. So Q equals MC delta T, which equals the mass, 75.5 grams, times specific heat capacity is given here. And oh, it's ice. Use the one for ice, 2.11. 2.11 joule per gram degree Celsius times delta T, which is 40 degrees Celsius. And that is, uh, what are we at? 75.5 times 2.11 times 40. And that is 637.2. So 6,372.2 joules. Don't round it yet. If we did round it, by the way, it would be three six figs, but don't round it because it's not our final answer. So that's to melt the ice. Two, melt the ice. Okay, so just to emphasize, we just calculated now is warm the ice up to zero. Now we got to melt it. So let's melt the ice. Mm, melting is done with this heat effusion, so that's 334 grams. So 334 joules per gram, and you times it by 75.5 grams. Gram cancels gram to give joule for your answer. And it's 25,217 joules to melt the ice. All right, let's continue. Hope everyone understands that ice freezes or melts at zero degrees Celsius, same thing. Zero degrees Celsius is the temperature of the change between freezing between liquid and solid. So no matter whether you're freezing or melting, it happens at zero degrees Celsius. So in order to get up to 250, you have to take your liquid water and go from zero to 100. So your delta T is positive 100 degrees Celsius because you're going from zero to 100. So Q equals MC delta T, which equals 75.5 grams of water as stated there, times specific heat capacity of liquid water is given right here as 4.184. 4.184 joule per gram degree Celsius. Never write a number that doesn't have units attached. And then uh, once that's done, you can multiply that by the delta T of 100 degrees Celsius. Degree Celsius cancel degree Celsius. Gram cancel gram, leaving joule for your answer. Okay, what is that? 75.5 times 4.184 times 100. And that is 31,589.2. 31,589.2, oops, joules, I almost put degrees Celsius. So that's the energy to warm the water. So four, let's vaporize the water. This is this step right here. So we melted the, warmed the ice, melted the ice, warmed the water, now I gotta vaporize it. So that's 2,260 joules per gram is what's given as the vaporization energy. So we take that and we times it by the number of grams, 75.5 grams, because look, gram cancels gram to give joules for your answer, hooray. Just calculating the answer, got that. So that's 170630, 170,630 joules. So that is for vaporizing the water. And now finally, five, let's warm the vapor. Now that's from 100 to 250 degrees. So delta T equals plus 150 degrees Celsius because you're going from 100 degrees, which is the lowest temperature you can have vapor, up to your final temperature at 250. So Q equals MC delta T which means the mass of 75.5 grams of vapor times the specific heat capacity of vapor, carefully use the right things, 2.00 right there, 
2.00 joule per gram degree Celsius times uh, your temperature change of 150 degrees Celsius. And when we calculate that out, we're going to get an answer of 22,650 joules is required to warm the vapor. So now we need to take this and this and this and this and this and add them together. Oh boy. Now, um, if we're going to do that, here's how we're going to have to round. We're going we're gonna to have to round it off according to um, where our properly rounded answers would be. So normally we would not round these. However, we do need to figure out how to round the final answer. And if we just take these raw calculator answers, it's really not going to tell us everything that we need. Um, so let's round as we go for each of these and then round again for our final answer. So this will be three sig figs. So this will be 6,370. This is going to be three sig figs. So 25,200 25,200 joules. And then uh, let's see here, we're going to have three sig figs again, 31,600 joules. And here we're going to have 70, oops, sorry, I misrounded, uh, 171,000 joules. And then here we're going to have uh, let's see, three sig figs all around. So it equals 22,700 joules. Normally you don't round until the end. However, here's the issue. We have multiplication and then we're gonna add them up at the end and rounding for adding has different rules from adding for multiplication. So in that case where we're gonna do one rules for rounding that would apply here and a different rules at the end, we have to round twice effectively because we got to get our multiplication rules out of the way and then we got to do our addition rules because we got to take 6,370 and then add it to 25,200 and add that to 31,000. Uh, let's see. Ooh, there we go. 31,600. And then we got to add that to 171,000. And then add that to 22,700. Yep, we add all that up. So last sig fig, last sig fig, last sig fig, last sig fig, last sig fig. So we're going to be rounding down in this area, but let's add up to see what that is. 6,370 plus 25,200 plus 31,600 plus 171,000 is 22,700 equals 20, so whoops, uh, 256,870. So we're going to round right here and we're going to call it 257,000 joules. Oops, me, I wrote numbers without units. There we go. And then uh, that is sine to notation becomes 2.57 times 10 to the fifth joules becomes our total amount. And again, why did I do that? Because if I had given these raw unrounded calculator answers that I had earlier, it would give a false impression of greater than no actual accuracy when adding these up which would cause me to round too far to this way. So when I have rounding for a, a multiplication and division with one set of rules and addition with a different set of rules, I got to do first one and then the other so that I don't cross my wires and get something that gives an incorrect impression of accuracy that isn't there. Anyway, that's that. And that's how you go about the big mother of all of these. Each of the rest of these involves the same idea, though in some cases, generally you might only have to do two or three of these calculations and add them together. All right, there we go.